I came to check out my old air compressor, the one I've been using for the past two, three years. I got it from a garage sale for free. While I was showing that, another guy came over and he wanted to check out my newly fixed Craftsman Snowblower 827. Remember, I took the gearbox apart and replaced the worm gear. And I had it listed for $275 before I fixed it. And then after I fixed it, I listed it for $350. And then the next day, this old man came and came to check it out in my driveway. I didn't, I didn't feel like bringing it to the church. It was too much trouble. So he bought it for three fifty, dollars uh, and then I helped load the guy a new air compressor into his truck. So I sold two things at the same time. Sold the snowblower for three fifty, dollars and then sold the air compressor for a hundred bucks. So all in all, 15 minutes, I made $450 pretty good day so far oh but guess what got something in the garage that still needs attention yeah i won't feel good until i get it fixed so as you saw i sold the snowblower for a 350 and got rid of my old air compressor which was taking up way too much space for a hundred and uh, put my Vivor one there. Good day. While it's great to have a car battery in here, it's really heavy, really difficult to balance too. So I might have to change it back to a motorcycle battery because it's really heavy. So hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Welcome to another episode on Sketchy 2, the uh, free Chinese 150cc motor scooter, generic GY6 model. Doesn't run right, bogs down on acceleration, but once you get to the point where the momentum of the wheel is spinning fast, it does run fine. Uh, from the last episode, I removed the air filter box, which was pretty clean, but it had that pulse area for the oil vent hose that was clear, but it was filled with oil. I thought that was the reason for it, but uh, I removed it and we did some testing. And if you put your hand over the intake while you're revving it, if you just open your fingers a little bit and allow the certain amount of air that gets in to mix with the fuel, it runs great. So I think the culprit was the carburetor was missing a part or two, and uh, it's just an old carburetor. I mean, I don't know how old, but I decided I was gonna go buy a brand new carburetor, an aftermarket one, and it comes with the cone filter at the end. I'll show it to you. So this came in the mail yesterday. It was only $25. I'll spend $25 to get my scooter running, right? at least to see, because I've really tried and tried and tried and I couldn't get it to run right. Uh, which was, you know, strange because it was running right just fine when I first got it to run. So it comes with an intake with a hose clamp and there's a rubber part here that, you know, I mean, it could be the intake too, you know, there wasn't like a good gasket or something like that. If you have any kind of a leak at, at that area, it's not gonna run right. The intake's very important. Uh, fuel filter, and you have one of these generic cone k and type filters. I believe you might have to oil this a little bit, you know, but, but I think this is just the amount of a blockage of the intake, if you will, of the correct amount of air that goes in. I think that the old filter probably was letting too much air in which is opposite of what this is designed for because this was this is designed to let more air in but you know it came with the kit so i'm just gonna try it um it also looks cooler too but you do it is louder if you use this but anyway that's the cone that's the intake and i'll show you the carburetor uh, i looked at the picture of it and it looked the same here's another 
fuel filter with a little gas line. And so here's the carburetor. Now this carburetor has all kinds of vacuum lines. And what I was reading is that you can delete all these vacuum lines because it's just for the EGR, you know, emissions and stuff. But many a times if you have a little small leak in the vacuum line or it's not connected right, it's not gonna run right. But this is a brand new carburetor and it looks, I mean, it looks identical to the one that I have. You know, you just look at the round thing on the top, you know. When I removed this last time, just to clean it, whatever, something dropped out of it and I wasn't sure whether or not I did. But anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna install this carburetor today and uh, we'll see if it runs better. So I was gonna just put you on time lapse and just do it, but I figure some of you guys might want to see how to do it. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it. Uh, it looks like the same carburetor. Time will tell, of course, if it is or not, and we'd have to do something about these lines. Like for instance, this bottom one here that goes into the float bowl. I mean, what the hell is that for? It doesn't. Nothing goes through it. Like it's, you know, look. It, it's closed. So, I mean, what's the point of it? It's just a waste if you ask me. So, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I should install this at all, you know, cause I don't have it on that one. And uh, so the, Here's the intake one, which I'm gonna to attach to the intake, uh, or this one here. This one is for the cone, right? Filter. Uh, goes into a T line here that goes to the, the intake has, has one where extra fuel or whatever can be reused or burned in the carburetor. You really don't need that stuff, you know? But anyway, you could just bypass that and attach it directly to here if you wanted to, but I mean, it has to go somewhere, right? You either block it off or you connect it. And would, I'll connect it, but maybe not so many of these lines. Useless. Here's the throttle. And that opens the throttle plate, which controls how much gas is going into the engine. And here, like I said, you had, if I would put my hand over like this and just open it up like that, at that point, it would run perfectly. You know what I mean? But if you closed it too much it wouldn't run right and if you opened it up too much it wouldn't run right so that was my dilemma uh, this goes to the automatic electric choke which I don't know how it works and I'm not sure if this one works right but it's an electric connection of course the pigtails don't match because this is like a two pin uh, module that goes into another thing this one over here is just two that goes into two wires so I'm gonna have to splice that but I'll, I'll use this, but I probably won't use this, uh, this line here. I'll just connect it directly from the intake. There's a, there's, a, there's a hose that goes out of the intake and goes right onto there. Um, here is the fuel input, right here. That's the fuel input, the bowl. This I don't think I'm gonna use either because it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, I don't know about what that's for, either opening or closing this, but why would you want to do that? Unless you're draining fuel for some reason. Over here is the, over here is the air fuel mixture screw, and that's very recessed inside. Whereas this one here, I was letting it out so much that this screw is almost completely out. And with the vibration of the engine, it would like loosen up by itself and fall out. So I knew that wasn't right, you know? Uh, whether or not this is a, has a spring inside or not, I don't know. And I'm not gonna try because I'm just gonna go with the factory settings right here since it's a brand new carburetor. I wanna just put it in and see if it works better. Um, I'll show you what it sounds like right now, okay? If it starts at all. There we go. Oh, fuel is off. I added this fuel shutoff switch. It's actually not gonna start unless you prime it or give it some uh, help, you know, with uh, starter fluid. Okay, 
it's not going to start. So I'm going to just give it a puff, a spray, right aiming at right for the hole, right there, just like that. And it should start now. So that's my dilemma. Uh, I'm hoping that the, you know what? Let's just slip the cone on real quick and see. So here's the cone. I wonder if it will even fit. Oh, it does. It looks like it fits right on there. I'm not gonna put the uh, thing back on yet, but let's just try it now. See if that helps. <laughs> Some help which is not right because you're not supposed to have to give it help it's supposed to be automatic So, I don't know. So I'm gonna shut off the fuel for now, since uh, we're gonna be taking this apart, and it's just one Phillips to remove the hose clamp. Actually, I don't really need to do that, but I will eventually. But I have to get a 5 16 socket to loosen the intake manifold bolt here and there. This is the new intake manifold, and I want to make sure that this has the output to the, I guess, excess fuel here. So this is on the side, right? Whereas that one is coming out of there like that. Same thing. So this one has, obviously, a new O-ring gasket here, so it'll give it a good seal. I'm going to swap that out. There it is right there. Two five sixteen bolts. I'm just going to take the whole carburetor off. As you can see, I've already attached the line. It goes from the intake manifold back to the carburetor to this area there, where I guess the excess fuel burns back into the carburetor. I don't know what the point is, right? Why don't you just seal this off? What's the point? I don't get it. But uh, since this one has an output for it or input for it, I guess you're gonna have to just put a hose there. I mean, does that make any sense to you guys? I don't understand what the whole reasoning is behind it. And um, this, I, this line over here that goes into a T, I believe comes from the valve cover area. And that's also a vent, you know, from the valve cover. Um, there's a pulse to it. Take that out. The throttle. The throttle connection is going to be a pain because you have to loosen it with this. 
Here's the fuel line. I'm gonna take the fuel line off right now. Since we did the shut off already, it won't spill out like crazy. There's the fuel line right there, we'll let it hang. As you can see here on the bottom of the float bowl, it has the same screw with the whole the thing that comes out, right? But I mean, nothing goes in or out of it. It's, it's as if it's closed. So I don't understand what the point is of that is. If you wanted to drain it, you'd still have to take the carburetor out. There's no way you could reach under there to get that screw to drain. So you'd have to take the carburetor out to drain it. So I don't see the purpose. I don't know, a lot of redundant stuff, to be honest with you. Um, just gonna disconnect this. Disconnect this. And the only thing holding this now is the the electrical connection to the automatic choke or electrical choke. As you can see, one wire, I, I put a piece of white tape there because I you can't tell the difference between the two. They're both black. See these two wires here? They're both black. One goes into a green and red and one goes into a black, but I, I can't distinguish which is which and I don't want to mess it up. So that's why I put the white tape there, but um, because of all the gas and stuff, it, I put a twisty tie in there. So the one that connects to the green, I'll put a twisty tie on it. So I know that the twisty tie wire goes to the green one. Now I can safely remove it without freaking out. Just a connection there, connection there. So this is just gonna hang here for now. And here is the gasket plate with the O-ring on it. And as you can see, it's okay, but it doesn't feel completely flush in all areas. Like it, it's pushed in a little bit more here, pushed in a more there. But I mean, honestly, when you, you have it on there, it's pretty tight. However, there's no real gasket that connects this flat surface to that. And should you not have a gasket? I think you should. Anyway, let's just keep that there for now. Look at the surface of that gasket here. You have another. Oh, so look here. There's a rubber gasket there. So I think the rubber gasket part goes to the, so the, the smooth surface. Maybe I had it like this, where it was a smooth surface and it was getting air gaps in it. Maybe the gasket was an on right. It's possible. Either way, we got a new carburetor now anyway. So um, I would normally disconnect this wire by just going like this, pushing this down. Get enough slack to pull this out. There, see? Now it's disconnected from the hole. And you release. You still have to remove this. Uh, looks like I can just remove this. Some excess fuel that's coming out from the bowl. Oh man, I'm gonna strip that. So, yeah, the new carburetor has this area too. So, I'm gonna have to get a couple of wrenches, loosen up these two bolts here. These two nuts are 12 millimeter. And yes, of course it moves along with it. Just remove it there. So now the throttle cable is removed. And there it is. This is the old carburetor. And all we
we're going to do now is just replace it with the new carburetor. Should be easy. I uh, will have to splice the wires to coincide with that kind of fitting, right? Because I don't have the other side to this. As you can see, this comes like that. So I'm going to have to cut this red module off, splice it, and get some connectors. I guess I'll splice... I guess I'll cut these two off and connect them. Crack on. Is it going to be cold? So the new carburetor has this red pigtail. I'm gonna cut it. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. Bing! Just like that. And then, of course, this has like a sheathing around it, which I'd like to get rid of too. Don't cut the wire, Henry. Oh, shut up. There we go. That sheeting's gone. So now we got a green and a yellow wire. Not yellow, yeller. <laughs> Alright, so that's that. Uh, here's the old one, has the connectors on it, which I want, so I'm just going to cut this, i just do with it. Uh -oh. <laughs> Blind. I'm going to leave a little bit in case I have to reconnect it. Bing! I'm going to pull this sheathing out. You got this wire with the uh, twisty tie on it that goes to green so I'm just gonna assume it's gonna go to green so because this area has a lot of fuel all the time I don't want to just tape it so I'm gonna actually do this oh crap My friend Roger McDonald sent this kit to me. It's very cool. So I'm gonna slip, slip this over like that. Slip this over like this. Green one like that. This back over. This uh, these connectors have a solder in the middle, so when you heat it up with a heat gun, it melts the solder and it. So the solder melted and now out. Don't touch it, Henry. Yes, I know that. Bothers me that this is yellow though. Where's that other wire? Matching the well, uh, the solder right to the connecting point. Heat it up.
So now it uh, has two nice connections. Should I try to fit this thing through there? I should have put that in through the other way. Yeah, that's not going to fit. We get it. So now I've got the connections right. All we have to do now is just put this back on the reverse order as we took it off. I can see that this is the green one, so I'll know with the twisty tie connected to the green. The other one, hopefully, the yellow means black. <laughs> All right. I'm going to put the new intake manifold on. This spacer gasket is already attached to this, so I don't have to worry about it. This looks like it's kind of curved. See, this is completely flat like that. This is somewhat curved like that. See? Why? Why do they do that? Why can't you just make it exactly the way it's supposed to be? Why does it have to be curved? Of all? Now I'll put the cone on. Screw head. That's smart, Henry. Thank you. Okay, now we have a tight seal for the. <laughs> I guess that's supposed to just do that. Tight seal onto here. We have a tight seal there. And then attach the throttle cable, put the two 516s back on, connect the connectors, fuel line, and then uh, hopefully that works. Put you on time lapse for this one. So nothing's ever easy for me. Right here, this nut is supposed to be on this side. That nut's supposed to be on that side of this thing. When I had it the way it's supposed to be, this thing was, the throttle was open like halfway already because the wire didn't have enough slack because this is rotated a little bit more this way than the original one. So I have to put this all the way on over here so that this would touch the screw. Otherwise, it would be like that. So basically, you turn on the, you turn on the scooter and it would be at half throttle already because this wire would be too short because this thing is configured differently than the original. So I got to put both nuts on that side to give it more slack, right? But now, nothing's preventing this from moving forward. I mean, you know, when you throttle, it seems to work, but I need to secure it basically to this. So I'm just gonna get a uh, mini hose clamp, put it on the other side. Why do things have to happen this way? And of course, it doesn't match up. This intake manifold is more narrow than that. Can you believe it? So, I guess I'm gonna have to use the old intake manifold.
So I've been messing with this a long time and it's, it's not running right still. It won't start without starter fluid. <laughs> Just won't start. A little dab of starting fluid on the air cone. So it won't idle either. And I've messed with the air fuel mixture screw. I've had messed with the idle screw for a long time. Just, I mean, I'm, I'm just about to give up. And I even crossed the wires on this electric choke thing too. And it doesn't make any difference as if it's not even working because you can't start it. That was just leftover fuel, you know, and it still won't start. So maybe the carburetor is not the exact one. I mean, obviously it, it didn't really fit. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm pretty much going to give up because I, I don't know what to do. I, I don't know what to do. Just baffled. See you guys next time. Amores or blowers? <laughs>